Uh, yeah, I do have. Super. So it's the 23rd of June. This is Google Summer of Code office hours. Remember that we abide by the Jenkins Contributor Code of Conduct. Uh, so I'm going to turn off my video, Aditya, and if you'd like to share your screen, we can we can talk through whatever you'd like, or you can just ask questions. Yeah, I would share my screen. Just just a minute. I'll uh, let that. Uh, yeah, basically my plugin build it's building so yeah if you want to see the logs then that is fine as well so i hope you can see my screen yes sure can okay Okay, so, and how did you get here? Did you get here by running maven hpi colon run or you're doing something different? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, it's, I see it yes. on the command prompt up at the top. It says hpi colon run, okay? Yes. Uh, okay. Something weird happened, just, uh, just a moment. You guys can still uh, hear, hear me, right? And see the screen. Hello. Hello. Okay. Yes. So I think uh, it's still building. There's some problem, I guess. I'm so sorry, I was on mute. I was saying, let me just terminate this and restart. I'll walk you through the entire process. So uh, basically this is a branch by a contributor and my task was to actually check whether this is working. And if yes, then merge the code. And uh, I came till here and I was, I built, I tried to build this using MV and HPI run and it basically did not, Build the Oh, okay. Up at the top, it says the palm for for one of the tools is missing. Okay. Um, it's so that make okay that now. Could you, in a separate window, show us your palm.xml file? I thought that that should already be covered by the use of the most recent parent palm. But what that, what I interpret that usually to mean is that there's a global settings.xml file in your .m2 directory that's not uh, configured. Uh, Kristen, you may have more guidance on this than I do, but my recollection was that in order to avoid that message at the top, we needed to refer to the repos.jenkins-ci.org in an m2 settings.xml file. So when you build an IntelliJ, does it have the same same error that same message? Uh, actually, no. I remember building it on my branch. Uh, like the one I was working on, and it did not give me this error. So, so maybe that that yeah. branch needs to be updated to the most recent. Oh, oh Is that right. something maybe? Like if like uh, was something, did something, okay, um, is something different okay. between your branch's palm file and that palm file? Um, and, and, and the master or main branch, yeah. Actually, no, because I saw uh, that the 
contributor only changed uh, the file in next version. Oh, it's in just conventional commits. So that was the only file change. Uh, but if still uh, that's the case, then let's uh, change to another branch. Well, before right, you but... make that change, could oh, you? Okay. Over? That's okay. Oh, you, okay. So sorry. I, I'll go back. I don't actually remember the name of the branch. Yeah. Okay, so now do a git diff to main. There's a CD change. Oh, there is a change in the pump file. Okay, and so so you you may want to. I don't know that that change in the palm file should cause the behavior you saw, uh, but right. I, I suspect that change in the palm file is a surprise for you. Yes. So it may be that the contributor, the person who submitted the pull request was working from a branch that was older than the tip of your master of your main branch. Possibly. So you could check that by quitting out of the, the less that's running and doing a git space merge space main. Okay, now do that git diff to, um, to, to main. Okay, what branch are we on? Uh, it's, a, it's called feature slash breaking change. Okay, and it's no different than main. So it's as though it contains no changes now. Um, could you show us the log um, of this yeah. branch? Okay, so if you're uh, surprised that why is that? Because uh, Garrett merged the code in main, I think 14 hours ago. Oh, oh, okay. So this, this yeah. branch that is feature slash breaking dash change has been merged. Yes, correct. And, oh. Okay, so you were trying to operate on feature slash breaking change without merging it. So we need to basically discard the merge that I just had you do. Did I understand correctly, Aditya? Wait. Or yes, I uh, I am not sure because isn't feature breaking change? That's a pull request that's open right now, right? Like uh, in the repository, and we're just trying to confirm. Um, that it actually works. So right? that was the task, but then uh, I think because it was taking time, Jared did all that and he merged the, uh, merged the pull request some hours ago. Okay. okay. So, so that, that is done. Okay. So Aditya, could you, do you have the GH command install? Could you do a GH space PR space list? Um, I'm, I'm afraid that won't work because GH is not there. I'll show oh, okay. you. Uh, All right. That's okay. If you can just, I can look at the conventional commits pull requests. Yeah, I'm seeing here. Yeah, it was merged. I'm so sorry. Is this basically, yeah, I guess basically, if it's already merged in master, do you know how bad this sounds? It, it sounds like it might be easier to just try to build master and see if it's still broken there. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Shall I do that? Because. Hello. Yes. Um, yeah. So you yeah. get checkout main and let's try. Wait. Okay. Uh, I, I did not actually hear uh, what Kristen said the last sentence. I was like waiting. Oh, sorry. Uh, um, I, I think that if it's already merged into main, we need to make sure that main is not broken. Because yes. if the, pro the problem is that the branch that you're looking at with that breaking change is different than main. But if this pull request has already been merged into main, it, it feels like it's it's already done, right? Like it, the 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 break has already been merged into the main branch. So what we need to do is make sure that main is not broken, right? So like let's right. check main and then try running HPI run on main. And like uh, Mark was saying, like it looks like there have been already changes between the 
breaking changes thing that you were running locally and main anyway so it might be best just to like restart look to see if there's a problem with main and then go from there Th yeah, does no, that okay. make sense yes got it so i checked out mail and uh, ran it in VNHP I ran. So, and the warning is still there. Yeah, so, and that, okay. and I don't know if that warning is fatal, uh, but it surprises me. And so I, I, I just worry that we should be able to get rid of that warning for you. Right. Because it's, a, yeah, I don't know. Let me check if it is, uh, yeah, it's still. Do you have right to that repository, that directory? Can, can you go really? back up, please? Or can you go back up to yeah. where the error message was? Yeah. It's trying to write to D. Do you have a D directory? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I'm using Windows. <laughs> There's a C and a D. Well, yeah, no, I mean, not, not all Windows have D. That's why I was like, <laughs> 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 So, but but usually that failed to delete means that something is busy, and and it may be that that what we've got is it's got Jetty running. It's trying to stop it and restart it, and and it can't because Windows has this behavior with regard to busy file systems. So this could just be an oddity with Maven HPI colon run on Windows. Um, could we go, go ahead? Directly. Well, say, is anything else running right now <laughs> in that space? Are you, did like I, a system not go down properly last time? Um, but then I restarted, I did shut down my laptop. So all the, uh, like, you know, the process should have been uh, like basically killed. And so I think that shouldn't be the case, but yeah, I'll, I'll check the processes. Just give me a minute. Yeah, so Aditya, I, since, since you and I are both on Windows, I'm gonna go ahead and clone the conventional commits repository and try the same thing on my Windows. I have a suspicion that I may be able to see exactly the same problem. So hang on just, or you continue doing what you're doing and I'm going to try to, to quickly duplicate the same thing. Okay. Because part of me is worried that Maven HPI colon run may not always be as well behaved on Windows as we'd like because of Windows busy file behaviors. Right, and there, I mean, the workaround for something like this is to just straight up build the plugin and create the HPI file, and then to start a Jenkins, or you can even at that point have your Jenkins running. Maybe not, because I don't, I don't think the tests for this are going to affect that, but you can have your Jenkins and then install the plugin into your Jenkins uh, okay. using some of the advanced features. And then when that plugin is installed in your Jenkins, like it's running. <laughs> it's clearly running because it's been installed in your Jenkins and then you can use it um, okay just like Jenkins but yeah if the HPI plugin thing is having issues like I don't know I find it sometimes easier just to ignore that and just actually create the object itself it, or like just create the HPI itself and then install it into Jenkins um, it takes longer but I don't know, so sometimes if you're not trying to make, um, if you're not trying to do like little, little changes, if you're, if you want to figure out what's going on with, especially now that we're with main, it, it may be easier just to do like a, okay. like creating the HPI file and then installing it that way. Do, do you know how to do that step? Uh, actually, I don't, can you guide me how to do that? Or uh, give me some right, kind so, of a tutorial if it's long, if it takes a lot of time. Um, no, so the, actually instead of running Maven HPI run, what you'll do is just Maven um, package. And then it will go through and like create everything for you. And then what will happen okay. is the HPI file will be in your target directory. 
Um, I think it might be in the plugin develop. I don't know if it's on the plugin development pages or not, but if you go to Maven package, it will go and like actually, it will generate all the stuff that you need. And then if you go into the target directory of the conventional commits plugin, like it will be on the top level, which will be like conventional commits.hpi. And that HPI file, you can pull into Jenkins. So um, okay. on the Jenkins plugin management, like if you go to the plugin management stuff on your Jenkins, if you go to the advanced tab, I don't know okay. if, you're, if you have a Jenkins running. Mm, no. no. <laughs> but if you have a Jenkins running, if you go to the, the plugins section, you go to configure, and then you go to plugins, and then there's, you know, you, have, you see the ones you need to update, then they have, um, I think, install, available, then like things that you have installed, and that last section is like advanced, and that's where you can do a whole bunch of configurations. There's an option, option to upload an HPI file from your local machine, and then you can just hit that button, um, go find the file, you know, and then um, save. And then I think you need, might need to, I don't know if you need to do it on Windows, but you might need to restart. And then um, or it, there's usually, like, after it gets installed, you can click this little checkbox that says, like, restart when nothing's running, which will be, like, immediately because you don't have any jobs running, which is good. And then after it restarts, your plugin will be available, and then you can go and, like, create jobs or do anything else that you need to do. But... Great. We'll wait for Mark to see if you've got so, it. So, Aditya, I've confirmed that the ex I see the exact same failure uh, when I attempt to do a, a, a press enter to do a cons to cause the thing to restart. It says exactly that failed to delete tempter and then it does not start. And so I think what we've got is a problem in Maven HPI colon run that it's got some file busy and then trying to okay. delete it. So I think that the workaround that Kristen has been describing is the one you'll need to use, which is run a Jenkins separately and load your, okay. load your plugin into it. Now, if you need to do debugging inside that Jenkins, you can attach your IntelliJ debugger to the running Jenkins. Okay. Do, do you wanna go, I, I, Mark, Mark, do you run into this problem with other plugins that you've had like the git plugin or is this something oh, oh yeah fix? the it's i think is this everything? is a just a general purpose issue with maven hpi colon run on windows oh, okay okay i didn't know if, if this was something in this repository that we could fix and i didn't know what it would be i right i think i've seen it before so now okay. i want to see if i can do if one of the one of the techniques i'd used in the past was instead of pressing enter to restart Maven HPI colon run, I would just rerun Maven HPI colon run. Oh, Let okay. me check that now to see if that's any better behave. So when I run, Aditya, just for your info, when I run Maven HPI colon run, I do not get the warning about cannot resolve dependencies. And so I've got a settings.xml file that I think can, can help you resolve that if you don't mind my just emailing you that settings.xml file to put in your your home directory m2 so I, yes please please email me that file okay I, and i i it, it sh i i thought it was not required but obviously i'm only using what i've got and i know what i've got is working so let's let's let me at least give you what i've got okay Okay, so I'm just going to email it to you, Aditya. Uh, okay. That way, uh, my and I, I, this this is you should not consider this the one true approved settings.xml file. A, this is a settings.xml file that works for me. Okay. And Kristen, uh, you would you like me to copy you on this, Kristen, just in case you want to give any guidance on sure. oh okay so sure yeah because yeah I, I think i understand the whole <laughs> settings xml file but um yeah i we'll see i 
I feel like everyone yeah, might have and... their own like special flavor, but it's probably very similar. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, my my file, my file, my Maven file is probably almost exactly the same. Mark, you might have a well, little and... bit more than I do in my in your file, but <laughs> yeah, I, I hope mine's pretty simple. But but the uh, I'll I'll send it that way. You've got it, Aditya. If okay, it's it's now been sent to you. So if we're lucky. You'll see it in your email and can copy it into. Uh, yeah, there. Okay, that's that's just amazing. Let's see. I just shipped some bits halfway around the world, literally halfway around the world, because you're <laughs> in India Standard Time, aren't you, Aditya? Yes. <laughs> and and they arrived in um, in a matter of milliseconds. That's it's truly amazing. <laughs> Technology is really awesome. Uh, okay, so in your home directory, there's a .m2 directory. M2. So I think this is the M2. Yeah, and, and uh, there, it's to be at that here. level, we need a file named settings.xml. Okay. Yeah, and Okay, and now if we're lucky and I did things right, okay, um, now if you go back to your command line compile and let's see if it compiles without that warning now. So we are we yeah, compiling exactly. main Maven, again? Maven HPI colon run. run. The warning's oh, gone. That's good. Okay, I like that much better. I feel better now. Well, now, okay. Now, and, and that was a first time run. So that surprises me because for me, when I do a first time run of your plugin, it works just fine. So that it may mean that um, IntelliJ has something busy. It may mean that there's another process running somewhere on your computer that has that busy. Um, we could if you're willing to, if it's not too heavyweight, we could stop the process that's running here and go out and try the same thing from a command prompt window in, in Windows. Okay, definitely. I'll terminate this, we'll close the IntelliJ. Oh, okay, if you don't mind closing IntelliJ, that's great as well. Yes, uh, I, I don't. Oh, wait. This one was running, oh, I totally... Ah, okay, now we know who kept it busy. Uh, I'm so sorry, I should have terminated this one before opening IntelliJ. No, so this this is great, good for you. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was great. So so do it again, and let's see, this, this may prove that we actually don't have a problem in HPI colon run, but let's let's try it and see. Sometimes you like to you have so many windows open and <laughs> lose track of where everything is. Yeah. <laughs> you do not okay. want to see my uh, my Chrome tab <laughs> Chrome windows. <laughs> uh, multitasking is very real and it helps right. us a bunch, except when it doesn't. So open up a web browser to localhost colon eighty eighty slash Jenkins. Okay. So this one. Yeah, that one there? exactly. Now, some of the some of the trade-offs you're making here. Ah, very good. Okay, so here it is. Scroll downward just a little bit, and we'll see. Notice in the bottom right-hand corner, you're running Jenkins 2.249.1. And that's because that's the version that your palm.xml file says is the minimum version that you can you can support conventional commits plugin with. If you would prefer to run a newer version, you can change your HPI colon run command to have a minus D Jenkins dot version equals and it will run a different version for you. Right. So now could you go back to the command prompt window 
uh, let's do something. So here, press enter. Let's see if it's able to successfully, nope, okay, there it is. Now you see the same thing I think that I saw. So now if you go back to your web browser, you will probably see that this no, this page no longer refreshes. Uh. Yes, okay, good. So, so the, the moral of this right now is maven hpi colon run you can use once, but it doesn't okay. support on Windows the press return to reload. Nice. So, and, and Kristen's point about run your own Jenkins, whatever Jenkins version you want, is, is actually a very good one. And with, with skilled use of the Jenkins underscore home command, you can actually have multiple different Jenkins versions that you switch freely between them if you want. So would you like to go through it with us to how you, can, how you start your own Jenkins there separately? That would be really helpful if it's okay with you. Uh, it's sure. great with me. Kristen, yeah, are you I'm okay fine. with that? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, I'll stop this one. Okay. So you can exit out of this, out of this window, stop this process. Great. So now what we need is um, we probably want a different directory. So go up one level, say, and maybe create a new directory. Let's call it, let's use a different version just for fun. Let's call it okay. Jenkins-2.289.9.1. That's the most recent LTS. Now change to that directory. Right, now we need to download that version from Jenkins.io. So open your web browser and go to the downloads page. Let's say Jenkins. Jenkins.io, right. And then we'll just, when, it, when that page appears on the download page, on the left-hand side, you see stable LTS scroll down a little bit. And we're going to download the generic Java package war. No, no, not no, not for Windows. We do not want to do Windows. Whoops, cancel okay. that. You'll, that'll cost you a seventy megabyte download. That you you really want generic package Java, the very topmost line there. Okay, this one. Exactly, Ooh. that's the one you want. Click that one, yeah, and save that preferably in that Jenkins dash directory. Just because then it's easier for us to know where we're, where it is. Right. Yes. And in Jenkins 2.289.1, save it right there. So what this, this will give us is this is going to give us a local copy of Jenkins 2.289.1, and we will teach it to run from inside that directory. So while it's downloading, switch back to the to the command prompt window. And let's, in this directory, I'd propose you create a script named go.bat or something like that. It's up to you what you want to call it. Okay, let's call it go.bat. Okay, and then the first thing it needs to say is set space Jenkins underscore home, all in caps. Equals and then the, the absolute path to this directory. So C colon backslash or D colon backslash, whatever it is. All right, so I'll just copy it quickly. Uh, yeah, if your file explorer will give you a copy of it or yes, okay. that, that will give you a copy. Any one of those is great. We just need that string, exactly. Okay, now new line and then Java minus jar. Jenkins.war. Uh, okay. And that's that should be all it takes if you save that. Oh, Have it now. So, so. Go ahead. No, uh, it is just my habit that after saving nano, it's like my fingers automatically like 
like control x so i was like i'm so sorry for closing it oh no that's great you did exactly the right thing you can close it that was perfect okay okay, okay. all right so now if we look at that directory has jenkins.war finished downloading uh not yet so not let's yet. see and we're about halfway there okay good um so somewhere on your computer there is a jenkins.war elsewhere could you while we're waiting for this download to finish go looking for files named jenkins.war and we can do this same technique with other jenkins versions while we're waiting for the download if there's anywhere then it's got to be your Yeah, when you when you did your initial installation of or have you installed Jenkins on this computer using the Windows installer? Uh, no, actually, I haven't. no, no, no harm, not expected. Just if if you had, that would have been one place to get it. Uh, another place uh, to find it. Uh, I have the. Okay, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Where is this file has to be? It's done, Mark. Okay. Oh, very good. Okay. So do go dot bat and let's see. All right, now you'll want to copy that. Um, you see that, that, yes, you did it, exactly. So open up a, uh, uh, a window. Notice that what it's doing here is it's putting everything in ADI, GSOC 2021, Jenkins Org, Jenkins-2.289.1. So you now have a Jenkins installation that is nicely scoped to exactly that directory. Okay. So if you open up our web browser to localhost port 8080, and now instead of slash Jenkins, I think it will not even require the slash Jenkins on the end. Yeah, there we go. It, it saw your request. Now you just paste that administrator password. And yeah, clear that, try again and install suggested plugins is usually typical. Um, just okay. just click, click, just click the button, right? And now what it's going to do is I think it will ask the update center for the list of plugins. Oh, that's interesting. Why would it say unable to connect to Jenkins? Any chance you interrupted the command? Did you stop yes. Jenkins? No, uh, no, no, I did not. Oh, weird. Huh, refresh the page. Before. Yeah, me neither. Oh, look, look. Okay. You can see that it's 
downloading. That's downloading. It's definitely, it's definitely doing work. I wonder if it's the UI. I yeah, maybe just refresh the page. I've never seen that method before. <laughs> I've never seen this happen before. Okay, ah, it's weird. This I is the this is the one we were expecting to see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder if it was it's was a timing thing. I, I guess maybe just a smart uh, the split second between generating this page and I don't know. That was weird. <laughs> I've never seen that happen before. Have you, Mark? I, I have not. No. Yeah. Weird. So Aditya, while this is running and it will it will continue running using whatever download time it needs, this this yeah. would allow you this will allow you to. So one of the techniques that that Kristen was mentioning, we could actually do in parallel to this. So if you want to bring up a command prompt window, okay, and and if you go to the place where your conventional commits plugin development is happening. So in this directory, you'll see the target directory. Yeah. And in the target directory, you should say see conventional-commits.hpi. I, I, first, okay, yeah. First, there, there's yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, shall I run it or package you and make what am I supposed to do? Uh, so what, what, what you want to do it to the easy thing to do now is copy conventional commits.hpi okay. as a file into that Jenkins 2.289.1 backslash plugins directory. Okay, got it. So I think it will be easier if I just copy from your the UI. Uh, yeah, that whatever whatever works best for you is great. So into the plugins directory, if you paste it there, okay. and now the next time you restart Jenkins in that directory, it will have your conventional commits plugin ready. Oh, amazing! So that was that was what Kristen was describing as the, hey, just run Jenkins yourself, and by running Jenkins yourself, you don't have to use HPI colon run. You can now use the Jenkins UI to manage it. So we could have also done that same exact operation by using um, the manage plugins upload operation. So there's okay. an advanced operation in manage plugins in Jenkins that could have done it as well, and. That was what Kristen was referring to. My copy technique is just a cheat, right? It's it's <laughs> because I know that that plugins directory is where those things go. Okay, right. We can look at that page after this finishes, too. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Now, for fun, if if you want to go back to the command prompt window where Jenkins was started, 
we should see log output from it telling us how it's making progress. Yeah, there we go. So it's downloading the durable task plugin right now. And so it, at least I find this, this output oftentimes quite helpful to hint to me, oh, something, something happened there and I need to be aware of it. Now, at least for me, I also have to be careful that I don't press control C in this window because that will stop my Jenkins. Um, Mark, you had another meeting, right, at 830? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Do I have another meeting? Thank you for asking. That's very kind of you. Uh, let me right. check. The UX SID, US SIG. Oh, yes. And, and that, I, it would be good if I could join that. Um, Aditya, are you OK? Actually, we may be blocking yes, them. Yes, yes, yes. Are you uh, OK yes, if we yes. end this session and just let you continue? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll I'll go to the advanced tab and try that method as well. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and end this session, and we'll let you continue your efforts, and then I can drop in on the the uh, UX Sig meeting. Okay, I'll stop sharing my screen then, and uh, we will continue. Great, and I will later today upload the recording of this so that it's available to you for reference, Aditya. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you so much, Mark and Kristen, for helping me out. That This has been sure. great. Thanks very much.